Hello guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video. If you can't tell by my accent, I am from the UK and we only really have one big chain pet store here that sells animals, which is Pets at Home. And last year I did a video where I reacted to their care guide for rats and I wanted to branch further afield and look at some different care guides from different countries. So although I've been to America about five times, I've never stepped foot in a chain pet store like PetSmart or Petco. So I'm really interested to see how their care guides differ to the ones we have here and if they're any good or not. So my friend Victoria Rachel sent me a parcel for Christmas and in that was this care guide whoops, from PetSmart and it's all about rats. So just from first glance, I'm not overly impressed, but we're going to have a deeper look at this and see if it's any good and probably pick it apart. So even though I am from the UK, I do appreciate that most of you, most of you guys are American and most of my viewership is made up of Americans. So it's going to be really interesting to me to see where your primary information comes from. Maybe you didn't find my channel until after you got rats and this is the only information that you were working off. So it's going to be really interesting to see what kind of information they are giving out in their care leaflets. And I'm kind of scared because even just looking at the front page, I'm already seeing things that I don't really like. Obviously I do have to preface this video with the fact that I don't personally support chain pet stores or pet stores in general. I don't believe it is ethical to buy animals in pet stores just because they are mass bred and they do come from these mass breeding facilities where they're not taken very good care of. So I don't personally support pet stores and I don't encourage you to go to a pet store and buy rats or any other animal from there. But it is really interesting to see what kind of information they do give people because even though personally I don't like supporting pet stores, it is the reality that a lot of people are going to pet stores and buying rats and this is the only information they're going off so this is going to be really interesting to see what kind of things they're recommending inside. So yeah, just looking at the front page, there's a cute picture of a rat. I don't know what it has in its mouth. At first I thought it was a pea, but it's blue so I have no idea what this rat is chewing on but it's pretty cute. So right at the top it says fancy rat and then underneath that it says hairless rats are available in select stores and I'm not entirely sure why they focus on hairless rats. There's so many different varieties that they could possibly sell in stores. So this is probably a marketing ploy to get people to buy hairless rats if they want them. I think that is a very big trend in America at the moment, but I don't recommend getting rats from pet stores, but I especially do not recommend getting hairless rats because they come with a lot of health issues. Even ones that do come from breeders have a lot of health issues. They have trouble lactating so they can't feed their young and they are really prone to eye issues and to abscesses so even a lot of breeders don't breed hairless rats and a lot of rat clubs in the UK and I think possibly in America don't support the breeding of hairless rats so I definitely don't recommend getting one from PetSmart because they probably will have those associated issues that are associated with that variety so it's really random they've put that at the top of the leaflet of all things but and then underneath that it says experience level beginner, which I don't know how I feel about labeling animals as beginner pets. I think every pet comes with its own challenges and I think labeling rats as beginner probably entices people to buy them if they've never had an animal before. And I don't think that I would necessarily call rats beginner pets, but maybe that's just my personal opinion. And then it says average lifespan, two years, which I'd say is about accurate. I know some places do say they live four or five years. This is very, very rare. I don't know many people that have actually had their rat live that long. So it would be irresponsible if they were advertising them to live longer than they do. And especially coming from a pet store, they're not gonna live too long. So two years is about correct. And then it just says their average size. And then it says habitat. Do they know what the word habitat means? It says habitat diurnal likely to be active during the day um <laughs> the problems i have with this is i don't know what habitat has to do with the sleep cycles and also rats are not diurnal they are crepuscular which means they're mostly awake during dusk and dawn so they're not always going to be active during the day so that is kind of false advertising because rats are not diurnal they are crepuscular and then it says housing in same gender pairs which at least they're not promoting single rats but it is disappointing they're not saying groups instead of pairs. Rats do a lot better in groups instead of pairs if you can, but I am probably nitpicking at this point, but it would have been nice if they said in same gender pairs or groups. So the first section is step one, habitat. Multi-level homes are preferred since they offer additional space for exercise. 
Your rat needs a wire home with a solid floor. I'm glad they're saying that because this avoids people getting mesh floors which could cause bumblefoot, which is good. It should be large enough for a food dish, water bottle, hiding house and climbing toys. Give plenty of room for all cage accessories and free movement. Minimum cage size is 24 by 12 by 12 inches. Really? What? So I'm used to working in centimetres, so let me convert this into centimetres because surely that is not what they put in this leaflet. <laughs> okay, that is terrible. The, if you if you work in centimetres like I do, that is the equivalent of 60 by 30 centimetres, which is shocking considering the minimum that I recommend for mice, which are so, so much smaller than rats, is a cage that is no smaller than 60 by 40 centimetres for one male or a few females, so that is tiny for rats. Wow, I'm shocked. So if we take a look at what I would consider being a minimum sized cage for rats, personally I wouldn't keep my rats in there anymore, but this is what I started out with and it is a good starter cage. And this is what I would say is the bare minimum for a pair of rats. And that is about 70 by 48 by 78 centimeters. So this minimum is considerably smaller than that. And I definitely do not recommend using that because that is pretty tiny. It does make me laugh how they say that the cage should have plenty of room for all cage accessories and free movement, but by the time you get in all of the things they need for enrichment and all the climbing toys, they're not going to have much space to move around and you're not going to be able to put that much stuff in that kind of cage, so that's pretty tiny. Please don't go off with that measurement because that is horrendous. Okay, moving on to exercise and chew. Exercise and chew, not exercise and chewing, exercise and chew. These items are essential for your rat's comfort and health, comfort, remember that. Number one, exercise wheel. Remember, rats can be nocturnal and use, they can be nocturnal, and use the exercise wheel at night. They also like to exercise outside of their habitat in exercise balls. Which, remember they just said, these items are essential for your rat's comfort. Exercise balls are not comfortable for any animal that you're gonna be putting in them. Whether it's a hamster, a gerbil, a rat, I don't even know if they sell exercise balls that would be logistically big enough to support a rat and make sure that their tails are not curving but please do not ever use exercise balls with rats they are horrendous just free roam your rats instead it's really not a good idea to be putting your rat in such a confined space where they can't choose to get in and out and their toes can get caught in the little gaps in the balls and overall it's just a stressful experience for them do not use exercise balls and i hate that this is telling you to do that because they are not essential for your rats and they are actually kind of cruel, so please don't do that. Weirdly enough, underneath the exercise and chew section is a house, and it says, clean hide houses regularly, edible homes encourage normal chewing behavior. <sighs> so I know the ones they're talking about, I think they're called like edible snack shacks or something, and these are pretty bad. The ingredients, if you look really closely at the ingredients, it's made of sawdust, which I don't recommend for any animals, but these are all glued together with like sugar or honey to make them into obviously the shape they're in. And if your rats are chewing these and eating these because they taste nice, they're practically ingesting sawdust. So these are edible hides are not good. If you have these in your rat's enclosure or your hamsters, whatever it is you have, I do recommend taking them out because a lot of people in the community have deemed them not to be safe and I really don't recommend them. Just get a normal house and give them other things to chew on instead of these because these are not good. I would opt for natural chews like willow and stuff like that instead of getting these little houses that are sugar and honey and sawdust and yeah, just don't use them. So moving on to just the care section. In general, it says provide lots of clean paper bedding or wood shavings. Mm, with that, that's too vague. It should say specifically wood shavings that are safe it does go down in the next line to say cedar shavings are not recommended for small pets. That should say pine and cedar shavings that are not kiln dried or dust extracted are not recommended, but just saying wood shavings in general probably gives people the wrong idea and doesn't go into detail about what kind of ones are safe. Um, and then it says bedding should be spot cleaned daily and completely changed weekly, which is fair enough. So in this section there is a picture of a cage and I'm not going to lie, this is probably pretty petty of me, but this is not a good example of what a rat cage should look like. Firstly, it's pretty boring, there's not too much for them to do. At a first glance, there's nothing for them to climb on, it does have mostly shelves, and it needs more things like ropes and ladders, 
and bridges for them to climb on, which is obviously a good thing. But in this picture, there is really not much of that. So looking at this, if you were a first time rat owner, wow, there is a massive plane going over. If you were a first time rat owner, um, this doesn't give you the best impression of what your cage should look like. My biggest issue with this picture, which you probably spot as well, is the wire wheel at the bottom. I hate that pet stores still sell these because they are not safe. Their feet and their tails can get stuck in the wire rungs. It's a much better idea to just use a plastic wheel or a metal one you can get specifically made because one, this wheel is not big enough, two, it is a metal wheel with metal rungs which is not safe so I hate that they put that on there because that is going to give anyone that is reading this leaflet the impression that oh it must be in this leaflet so it's safe which in reality it's not safe so please don't go and buy wheels like this. Then on this page is also a tiny section for traits and behaviours and it says rats are the smartest of all small pets and can learn to do simple tricks. That's a big statement. Fancy rats are calm, curious and fun loving. They love to play with their pet parents and fancy rats groom often so they've really not gone to town much on this section. They've put very small sentences but so the next section is just the care section continued and it says rats are omnivores. Yes. Gives these as additives or treats, not as their primary food. So the issue I have with this is you can give them seeds as part of their primary food. If you're giving your rats a well-balanced, high-quality mix, this will obviously have seeds as part of that. So you can give it as their main food as long as it's part of the mix, but that sentence is pretty vague anyway. So the next sentence is pretty ridiculous and it did make me laugh, but it's also spreading misinformation. It says, always place food in a bowl. Always place your food in a bowl and this prevents ingestion of the bedding. I have no idea where they got this claim from because it is pretty ridiculous. Rats, as I just stated on the other page, are the smartest of all of the small pets and they're not going to be stupid enough to ingest the bedding because they're trying to eat the food. And placing the food in a bowl is really boring for them. It doesn't provide them with any enrichment, so I don't recommend giving your rats food in a bowl and a lot of people Rat owners tend to not do this anyway because it is a lot more enriching to scatter feed them and throw the food around the cage and hide it around the cage and not give it in a bowl. So I don't know where this claim came from, but it's really weird. Always provide fresh water in the cage once a day, clean all the food and water containers, which is fair enough. That's pretty good information to give people. Then it just has a little table that has dietary guidelines, prepared diets, commercially prepared pellet diets that should Refresh the food daily, keeping the bowl approximately three quarters of the way full. This is how you're going to get obese, overweight rats if you follow this information. Whether you're feeding them a nugget diet or a mix, you don't want to be just topping up the food continuously, making sure it is pretty much all the way full because rats will overeat and this is how they get fat and you obviously don't want that because it's not good for their health. So. I do not recommend doing this, I recommend waiting until they have finished all of the food in the bowl and then topping it up, whether this is every day or whether this is every other day, I definitely don't recommend keeping it full all the time because your rats are going to get overweight. And then it just says vegetables should be fed every day, um, fruit and vegetables and treats should make up about 5% of the daily diet, remove after 4 hours. I don't necessarily recommend feeding them fruit and vegetables every single day, possibly every other day or a few times a week is recommended. If you're feeding them a lot of fruit and vegetables every day, firstly they're probably not going to eat their main diet and also they can get diarrhea from this, it's not pleasant and it's also not nice for them either because fruit and vegetables have a high water concentrate, high water, what am I trying to say, high water, they've got a lot of water in them basically. So. If you're giving them so much fruit and vegetables on a daily basis, that's going to come out the other end and it's not going to be nice, so I don't recommend doing it every day. Um, and then it says treats should be offered sparingly and should be no more than 5% of the diet along with fruits and vegetables. So that's a pretty standard list, apart from the alfalfa, everything on there is kind of okay. If you want a more comprehensive list of everything that is safe and not safe to feed your rats, I will leave that link in the description because this is pretty vague, there's not too much on there in terms of ideas. It doesn't recommend peas and sweet corn, which rats absolutely love, so yeah, it's just a bit of a meh list. And then the last section is safety and cleanliness. Use caution when handling pets. Recommend pets may bite or scratch, especially when stressed, and especially when they come from a pet store and they've never been handled before. Fancy rats have limited vision and rely on their senses of smell and hearing to learn about their world. Yep. 
Um, never lift your wrap by the tail. Thank God they put that in there. And be sure to support and do not hold too tightly. Supervise around children when, I can't even read anymore. Supervise children around pets. And then it just says on the back, it has all about how PetSmart is vet assured, the standard for pet care. If this is the standard for pet care, this is pretty low. Um, and it says, if your pet becomes ill during the initial 14 day period, or you're not satisfied for any reason, PetSmart will gladly replace the pet or refund the purchase price. So if your pet gets ill, don't worry, just take it back and they can just swap it for a brand new sparkly one that is not gonna be ill, which is great. New environments can be stressful for pets, so allow three to four days for adjustments. Some rats, sadly, from pet stores will need a lot longer than this in terms of behaviour, but also it says, um, watch for signs of stress and illness. This care guide includes general information for proper pet care, but is not comprehensive. Yes, it's very, not very comprehensive at all. For more information, visit PetSmart.com and other educational sources, which they don't link on here, so you just have to fend for yourself and try to find them yourself which is great. <laughs> Things to watch for, cloudy, sunken or swollen eyes, overgrown front teeth, bare patches in the fur, diarrhea or discoloured droppings, which can sometimes happen if they're fed on a particular diet in the pet store and you're choosing to feed them a different diet. This can sometimes happen when you bring them home anyway. Um, sluggish behaviour, weight loss, not eating or drinking normally, sneezing, discharge from the eyes, nose or mouth. If your pet shows any of the signs above, consult a pet smart store associate or small animal veterinarian about your pet's health. So it would be nice if they did have a section talking more about respiratory infections because rats are so prone to having them. Pretty much every rat owner is gonna experience that at some point in their time of owning rats. So having a section in that would be nice. To prepare people, it does say about the sneezing and the discharge from the eyes. It doesn't mention that the discharge is red, which can be quite scary to some people. That is perfectly normal, as long as it's not in major large amounts. But yeah, it's pretty disappointing. <laughs> Pretty disappointing that they don't go into more detail about health issues that are quite common. It's just pretty vague with things that can occur. So yeah, that pretty much concludes the PetSmart Rat Care Guide. That was wild. I wasn't expecting there to be that much misinformation and just bad information in there. I think when I did the UK version for Pets at Home, I was pleasantly surprised by the information. This time, however, I am not impressed with that at all. That was pretty terrible. I don't know whether it's because a large portion of my viewers are from America, so naturally a lot of you will be messaging me anyway, but I do find that most of the people that do come to me with new rats and they are looking for advice have made a few common mistakes, and I'm not surprised if this is the information that the pet stores are giving you. I'm really not surprised that you are making these early beginning mistakes because if that's what you're reading when you're trying to get your rats, that's not very helpful because you are going to make these mistakes because they are in the care guide. So yeah, overall I would literally give that a 1 out of 10 in terms of a care guide. There's not much information in there anyway. The font is pretty big so they don't have much room to put decent information and the information that is in there is incorrect some of the time. Some of the stuff in there is pretty good, I will give them that, but overall it isn't painting the best picture for first time rat owners, which is really disappointing. So yeah, PetSmart, I hope you take a look at your care guides and make the changes that are needed because this could ultimately be causing people to unknowingly put their animals in substandard conditions, which is not great, and something does need to be changed with these care guides, and there does need to be more information that is correct put into them because that would be really good. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want to see what it's like in a UK chain pet store care guide, I'll leave a link to my cards and in the description. I did do one with pets at home, as I mentioned earlier, so that will be linked in the iCards and down below. Please make sure to subscribe to see any more animal content for me, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!